Hello, we are Cody, Josh, Grayson, Kyle, and we are the Procrastinators. And this is our adaptation of The Girl Who Can. <laughs> Ama Ada Ido was born in Ga Ghana, Africa, where her father was in the village was the village chief. He wanted her to have a Western education and sent her to a university in Cape Coast, Ghana. Ido earned her bachelor's degree in English and later taught at universities in Ghana and the United States. She has written plays, short stories, poetry, and novels. Her fiction written in English often explores the conflict between Western and African cultures and the roles in, of women in modern society. In this story, the girl who can is a dojo. A dojo apparently has a hard time talking fluently in her native language, and she gets much dis discouragement because of the reaction she receives from her grandmother and others in the village. Her grandmother then begins to criticize her legs, saying they are too thin to produce children. In the end, a dojo runs in a race that her school hosts to try to prove to her grandmother that her legs are useful. They say that I was born in Hasadis. It is a very big in the central region of our country, Ghana. They also say that when all of Africa is not choking under a drought, Hazadis lies in a very fertile lowland in a district known for its good soil. Maybe that is why any time I don't finish eating my food, Nana says, You Adosian, you don't know what life's about. You don't know what problems there are in life. Take Nana first. I have to struggle to catch her attention. Then I tell her something I had a long time to figure out. And then, you know what always happens? She would at once stop whatever she's doing and, mouth open, stare at me for a very long time, then bending and turning her head slightly so that one ear comes down towards me. But does you say what? After I repeated whatever I had said, she would either still, in that voice, ask me, Never, never, but never repeat that. Or she would immediately burst out laughing. She would laugh and laugh and laugh until tears were running down her cheeks and she would stop whatever she was doing and wipe away the tears with the hanging edges of her cloth. And she would continue laughing until she was completely tired. But then, as soon as another person comes by, just to make sure she doesn't forget whatever it was I had said, she would repeat it to her. And then, of course, there would be two old people laughing and screaming, tear-faced grown-ups, and all that performance for whatever I had said, I find something quite confusing in all of this. You see how neither way of hearing me out can encourage me to express my thoughts too often. What I am sure of is that when I came out of the land of sweet, soft silence into the world of noise and comprehension, the first topic I met was my legs. Nana would say to Mama, You know, Kai, I thank God that your first child is female. But Kai, I'm not sure about her legs. They are too thin, too long for a woman. Mama would try and stick up for me. Some people have no legs at all. As I keep saying, if any woman decides to come into this world with two legs, she should select legs that have meat on them with good calves. Because you need legs to support solid hips. And a woman must have solid hips to be able to support children. In my eyes, all my friends have got legs that look like legs. But whether the legs have got meat on them to support the kind of hips that, that I do not know. Running with our classmates in our small sports field and winning first place each time never seemed to me to be anything about which to tell anyone at home. This time, it was different. I don't know how the teachers decided to let me run for the junior section of our school in the district games, but they did. And yes, I won every race I ran for my school, and I have won the cup for the best all-round junior athlete.